Hi, today I want to explain a very basic but very important concept to anybody who works in the service business. That is that it is not about the money, it's about the respect. We don't charge certain rates just to make money. The most important thing when setting your rate and when charging your rate and sticking to it is the respect, is establishing respect for the craft, establishing respect for what you do. Because if there is no respect involved in the relationship, if there's no respect involved in what you're offering, even if it's a very simple service, you are very much fucked. You're screwed and you're going to be in for a lot of misery. What do I mean by this? Let me start by explaining how most people enter negotiations, how most people make decisions. They make decisions based on their gut. Even really intelligent people make decisions based on their gut, based on their emotions, based on how they feel. Now that we've got that out of the way, how do most people feel about paying somebody in the tech business? really bad because what they think you're doing they think that you were born with a magical skill set that they don't have with an ability like a magician you were born with a trick where you just do this and you make it work again and they think that you're exploiting this thing that you were born with that they don't have they think that you're exploiting this to make money to take their money like you're evil and even very good kind-hearted intelligent charitable people believe this kind good people who are honest and hard-working believe this and since they believe that they're going to try to do everything they can to get work out of you for nothing to beat down your raid to argue with you to be combative and they don't respect what you do they don't respect the skill they think it's something that you were born with that you magically have that you use to cheat people out of money and again it's a feeling and it's really it's simple to work with people when something's in their mind and it's not true but it's hard to convince somebody of something when it's in their heart when it's in their gut when it's how they feel because you can't use reason to get people to feel a certain way. All you can do is work with feelings. You can't work with reason. You have to make them feel something. And the way I gain respect from certain people is to make them feel pain at the time of payment for service by charging a rate for it. That is the only way to combat this. A lot of these people feel that I know how to do this because I was born with it. You know, like putting this wire on this board in this position right over here and wiring it to this other side. Yes, I did that in five minutes. And they see it like, you fuck, you're charging three to $25 for that. You fucking fuck, you asshole, you prick. And they feel like they've been ripped off. They feel like they've been cheated. And they are going to do everything they can to get out of paying. And usually you can tell this from the beginning when people start belittling what you do to ask for a discount. It's just a wire. Isn't that easy? Uh, couldn't you just use a, a toothbrush and alcohol to just fix that easily? Why'd you have to do this all, all that other work for? And you'll be able to tell after a certain amount of time when you meet these people who they are. And the thing, it's important it's important to not give in. It's important to not give into it because what happens is you wind up entering this Stockholm Syndrome kind of relationship where you are a hostage to the customer, where they will be very, very happy to tell all of their friends about all the work they're getting out of you for free, all the extra things they got you to do, and I, he was trying to charge me this for just a wire. I showed him is what they'll be telling everybody, and it's not because they're mean people. It's not because they're bad people. It's not because they're cheapskates. It's because they fundamentally feel like they're are being ripped off and it's important to not become a hostage it's important to not say well it's just a wire so just give me 20 bucks it's important to not become a hostage because when you enter a willing pr relationship under these terms you have become a hostage and when you are okay with it and smiling and saying thank you for your business you are now someone with Stockholm Syndrome because not only is this person taking you hostage, but you're okay with being taken hostage and that's where the real fuck shit starts. And again, a lot of people, they get to a point where they say, you know what, I'll just take 10 or 20% off because they asked for it and we are making a lot off of this or this was kind of easy for me. And again, Stockholm Syndrome. Don't think about the 10 or $20. Don't think about it's just $20 I'm taking off. That's just, you know, lunch once a week. I don't care about losing just 20 dollars we're making enough don't think of it about the money don't think about the money don't make the decision to give the discount based on the money make the decision based on the respect when somebody says that's easy why are you charging for that that's easy i could do that myself this person is cheaper blah 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 i saw the part cost this much on ebay don't make the decision to offer a discount make the decision based on money make it based on respect there is no respect there. So let's say you offer the discount saying, thinking that the only consequence is that there's no money. Well, at the end of it, he's going to be telling all of his friends while you're doing the repair, he wanted to charge me this and I showed him and I got only that. Then when they get it back, 
here's where the real fun starts. Here's where you start getting phone calls saying, I weighed my computer before I brought it to you and it was four pounds and seven ounces. And since you fixed it, it's four pounds and nine ounces. I am not paying. What are you going to do about that? Now, if you had entered the relationship based on respect, they would not be doing this. They would not be paranoid. They would not be weighing their machine before and after the repair to look for the things that you fucked them over on. But when you work with people who have this feeling in their gut like, ah, they are screwing me, therefore I need to screw them. You are going to get people who weigh the computer before and after the repair, and if it's an ounce and a half more, they are going to tell you why they're not paying. You are going to get people who have A1181 MacBooks from 2006 fixed that have screen issues, and then when they're picking it up, and they're looking at the retina right next to it that somebody else is picking up, they're going to ask, why does my screen not look like that one? You worked on both of them, why does mine look like this? And no amount of explaining to them that a fluorescent screen from an Eight-year-old laptop is not going to be as bright as an LED backlit screen from a two-month-old laptop is going to get through their head. Again, you're not dealing with the brain right now, so nothing you say, no case studies, no information from the internet that you show them is going to mean jack shit. Nothing even from Apple's marketing, where they say that the LED backlit screen is, mar is brighter, from the very ma the manufacturer of the product is going to mean anything. Because you're arguing with the gut, with the emotion, with how they feel. And when you're arguing with how somebody feels, you are very, very fucked. Now, again, we offered a discount, and they, uh, they asked for a discount. For some reason, at the time, we caved, and each one of these times, we have been fucked, because there's no respect. There's no, I'm telling you how it is, and you believe me, because I'm a technician. There's, I feel like you screwed me, and I'm going to do everything I can to get my money back, and to get you to do things for free, and to get you to do things that are impossible. Impossible. Like, take two ounces out of his computer. Like, make the eight-year-old fluorescent backlit screen as bright as a retina screen, they're going to ask me to do things that I'm not even capable of for any amount of money just because they feel like they're being screwed. And when you give the $20 discount, you think that the only consequence is the $20 discount. You don't think that the consequence is the misery when it comes time to end the relationship, when it comes time to get paid, when it comes time to ask for a referral, when it comes time to come back and do something else. You're not thinking about that. You're not thinking about everything that's going to go downhill because you're not starting the relationship with respect. You're thinking about the only consequence is the $20 that I lose. That is a very short-sighted mindset that is going to get you fucked over time and time again. And again, these people are going to are going to tell all their friends, all everybody they know, he tried to do this and I told him I know what that part costs on eBay and I know that you can just clean this and make it work again and he and he caved. And after they tell that to their friends, they're going to get this confidence to do it again and again and again. And again, they are trying to cause you pain. And again, they feel in their gut like it is their responsibility, these good people, these charitable, kind, hardworking people, when they feel like they're getting ripped off, they feel in their gut like it is their responsibility to fight back. And the way you fight back is making sure there is a pain point for everything you offer, and that pain point is in the form of a labor rate that does not change. You know, a great example, a great example for me was going to offices and helping them with their systems when they were down. You know, if you set up small business systems, if you've ever went to a small office before, you you know how it is when one of their computers fucked up. They have some software that's installed on 50 of their computers. They have 50 CDs for it. They don't know the license key, so I'll tell them. Yes, it's very easy for me to wipe and reload the system so that it works again. I'll just do a reinstall. I'll install everything back. All I need are the license keys for these two pieces of proprietary software that you have. And they'll look at me like, uh, and I'll go, well, okay, if you don't have the key, that's fine. You just have to buy the software again and give it to me. And they go, but I paid for it already. I paid for QuickBooks already. I paid for this design software, whatever, already. And I'll go, okay, then just get me the keys, get me the software, and I'll happily reinstall it. And then they'll point me to a fucking closet or this little corner with a cardboard box filled with scratch CDs. And they'll go, okay, well, I need you to figure out which one's for this computer. And I'll go... Yeah, I'm not going to go through this box and figure out which of these 70 CDs is for this particular machine for free. And again, if you, if you think what you're doing is easy, if you, th if you let them think that they're getting screwed over, you may very well say, you know what, I'll do this off the clock. I'm not going to charge you 20 or 40 or $80 an hour to go through this because I'm just going through a box of CDs. Seven hours later, seven hours later when you find the one fucking CD that you need and the one license key that you need, 
you would have wasted all that time. And they're going to be laughing and telling everybody how the tech guy tried to screw me over. He tried to charge me $700 to look through a box. The pain point needs to be with them. They need to respect what you do. They need to respect what you do to the point where maybe they label their fucking CDs along with the computer they went with. They need to have a pain point so they remember that what they're doing is fucked up and that they cannot have you go through all this crap. There needs to be a mo reason. There needs to be a motivation for people to be organized. And that motivation is going to be, I don't want to pay the tech guy $75 an hour to watch him go through CDs to find something. That is what I mean when I'm talking about respect. Respect is very important. You need to have respect in the beginning of the relationship. You need to have respect at the end of the relationship or there cannot be a business arrangement. My business is not based just on repairs. My business is based on I am going to make you happy at the end of it. If you're not happy at the end of it, I feel bad taking your money. So I f do not do business with people when I know that they are going to be unhappy. When they're unhappy in the beginning, at the basic idea, at the basic fundamental way this works, where I provide a service using a skill set and you give me money. I just can't do business with you. And that's just how it is. And that's how I have tried to avoid conflict in business and in life. Now, I don't want to sound like Scrooge McDuck or Mr. Moneybags. I am not a greedy guy. I'm not trying to take money from everybody. And I believe in offering discounts. At this point in the video, you may think I don't believe in discounts. I believe in discounts. I believe in generous discounts. The reason that I have a full-time salesperson on staff, he is here to keep me from offering to people who have respect for the craft what I want to offer, which is ridiculous amounts of work. At virtually no money. He's there to keep me from screwing over myself. I have an excellent salesperson. And again, he doesn't even get commission off of this. He just doesn't like seeing me give away my skill set for free. And I, I, I'm not, I shouldn't really get into it on a public video, but the amount of crap that I've given away for free when people show that they had respect for the craft is just asinine. The amount of BGA rework, the amount of motherboard repair, the amount of just the amount of crap that I've given away in terms of parts, service, time, when I really shouldn't have, just because somebody showed respect, it really goes a long way. You know, one example, a week ago, this guy brings in a machine, and he says that it's not working after he spilled beer on it. And I open it up, and he has issues with the sensors. The motherboard sensors are not sensing what they're supposed to, so the machine is running slow as dirt all the time, and it's, it's, un it's unfucking usable. It's like one megahertz that the thing is running at. It takes 10 minutes to open Safari. And I tell him the price is 325 plus tax. It is a board repair. And he's like, damn. And I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for, can you just clean it with toothbrush and alcohol? I'm waiting for him to go on and on about how this should just be cheaper. And how this guy in Florida on eBay does it for $100. And now you're ripping me off. And now I heard that you can fix this if you just put it in an oven. Or if you just pour alcohol on it or put it next to your window. And I'm just, I'm waiting for it. But it doesn't happen. He goes, you know. I lost my job. I need this computer for a, jo for a freelance gig that I got, but I just can't afford it. I'm sorry. What do I owe you for the estimate? It's free, but he's willing to pay for it. And I tell him that. And he's like, I'm going to bring it back as soon as I have the money. Thank you very much. And I tell him, listen, if, if, if you have a situation going on, I can work with you on price and we can work something out. You know, let's talk about it. And he goes, no, would you, would you, I, know, I, I know what you're doing is hard work and I know it's going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, no, the price you gave me is fine. I'll come back when I can afford it. He didn't want me to give him a discount. He thinks that the work is difficult. He has respect for the craft. He came back four days later. His board is fixed. His trackpad, which he never asked me to fix, is working. His, uh, his, some issues with his drive are resolved so that the machine is not copying data off at 5 megabytes per second. It's working at 90. His screen has been cleaned. His hinges have been tightened. I, I'm not going to go into the rest of the crap that got done here for free for no extra money when these parts cost me money when this time cost me money he's getting all of that and I'm I feel safe giving the discount now uh, because I feel sa I feel safe giving the discount because he I feel I am now okay and safe to give the discount because he has shown respect and you know it's 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 kind of I know this is probably a bad analogy but if you're dating a woman it's kind of like when you're always you know bragging to your friends about all the people you sleep with how you're bragging about how you know you're a player and all this crap and a lot of the times those people don't really get with women that they want to they don't get with the women that they talk about but when you're an honest guy when you let make somebody feel comfortable with themselves You'll be surprised when, you know, how your dates go. You'll be surprised uh, how much trust you get. And again, the same thing is true here. When you 
actually have respect for the work I'm doing, I feel okay offering you a discount. Because I know in your head, you're not thinking, I'm going to tell all my friends what I got this guy to do, and I'm going to have them work me up so I can get more free work out of him. I know that you appreciate it. So I feel okay going the extra mile. I feel okay doing this work for free because it's not going to be taken advantage of. And that's a very important thing. And it's very easy to get that Stockholm Syndrome. It's very easy to say, well, what I do is simple, so let me charge a little less money because they asked for it. It's very easy to get to that point where not only are you fucking yourself, not only are they fucking you over, but you're okay with it and you're smiling the entire way because you think that's just how it's supposed to be. I don't want you to be thinking about how easy it is now. When I found this, when I fixed this board and I put this wire from over here to over there, I wasn't thinking about the three or four minutes that it took me to diagnose it. I wasn't. I was thinking about the hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of hours that I have spent sitting in this chair so that I could get even to a, a small level of understanding how this works. I was not thinking about how easy it is now with my thousand dollar microscope and my $650 soldering station and all the schematics that I have, I wasn't thinking about how easy it is right now. I was thinking about how hard it was to find those schematics. I was thinking about the shithole apartment that I lived in so I could save up to buy a $650 rework station. I was thinking about the vacation that I didn't go on so that I could spend $1,000 on a microscope that allowed me to see that little small part so that I'd be able to actually solder the wire onto the fucking probe point that I can barely see. I was thinking about the girlfriends that I had neglected. I was thinking about the friends that I had not gone out with. I was thinking about the time that I sat in this chair so that I, because I was devoted to learning my craft, I was thinking about the time that I spent working so I could afford my tools that I didn't spend otherwise. I was thinking about the time of my life that I sacrificed to get to the point where I could do that in five minutes. You don't think about the fact that it's easy for you. You think, think about how hard it is for them without the tools, without the knowledge, without the experience. That's what you think about. It's really easy when you get to the point where you're that good that you can figure this crap out in a couple of minutes to say, eh, well, let me just do it for less. And when you do that, you devalue the craft and you lose respect. And they, you realize that they don't respect you. And when they don't respect you, you open yourself up to all types of misery. And it's not just in IT. You, this is with surveillance systems. This is with networking. This is with laptop component level repair. This is with electricians. This is with plumbers. This has to. This is with chefs. This is with everything. Any type of service-based business where you are doing something that somebody else does not know how to do. And the thing is, with your business, you're going to realize the telltale signs of it. You're going to get to a point where you're so good at it that even basic vocabulary is going to tell you when this is happening. Uh, one of my personal favorites, because it has a 100% rate of somebody leaving and being pissed off, 100% rate is when somebody goes, do you replace iPhone covers? How much is it to replace this iPhone cover? You know why I know that the word cover is uh, showing a lack of respect for the craft? Because it's not a screen. It's not something that I have to spend 30 minutes unscrewing. It's just a cover. It's a little cover that just snaps on like this and then snaps off like that. And in 90 seconds, I just take this little piece of plastic, this little cover, and put it on. And I take the little cover off. And it's supposed to be five bucks because it's just so easy. All of that is put into the implication when somebody says, how much is it to replace my cover? And in six years, in six years, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2000. 2013 and almost all of 2014 not in six fucking years has one person come to me and said how much is it to replace my iphone cover and actually had it done which proves the theory right six years not one person has ever had it done because they don't see that I'm taking 30 minutes of my time to unscrew a motherboard from a phone, to unplug your camera, to unplug your Wi-Fi, to unplug your antenna, to un unplug the battery charging crap, to unplug every little thing and put every fucking screw, which is a different goddamn size, back in a place without screwing anything up. No, it's not that at all. It's just a little cover that snaps on and off. Just, why, why is this little piece of plastic so much money? And... You'll get to a point where you can spot this crap from a mile away. And when you see those things, I don't offer it for a discount. And again, when people are like, oh, you did a great job. I don't want to try to do this. You know, it's, you did a great job. I've been here like two or three times. Again, I'm not going to give prices. I'm not going to give specifics because this is a public channel and people are going to expect it when they come in here. You have no idea the level of discounts I've given to people who come in with a basic level of respect. You have no idea how many discounts Steve has given who, who just over basic small little gestures that you actually respect what we do. But 
where we cannot give discounts, when we cannot give discounts, is when people come in with that expectation, when they come in with that lack of respect for what we do, it is imperative that there be no discount. And even more imperative it is that there just should not even be a business relationship. Don't screw yourself. Don't drive your, don't get Stockholm Syndrome. Don't drive yourself nuts. Don't lose respect for yourself. Don't lose respect for your craft. And above all, don't work with people who don't have respect for your craft or for you. It's not about the money. It's about the respect.